Hello. Okay. Wow, lots of bits. So, so this week um, in teaching here, we were talking about the nose and some other bits and bobs. So I thought I'd do a little bit of anatomy of the nose. And I like the uh, I like the skull a lot. I like the bones of the skull a lot. The Anatomical Society chucked out some tweets this week to ask anatomists, "What's your favourite part of the body? What's your favourite anatomical structure?" I've been struggling all week. There are so many really nice parts of the body. Um, so many, you know, really nice anatomical structures. I can't pick one. Um, and I tweeted them that. And I think it's taken me so long to try and come up with one that it's blown over a bit now. Anyway, the skull is an awesome piece of anatomy. There, it's, I mean, it's, inc- it's just very human, isn't it, the, the skull? Um, and if we look at the front of the skull, we're going to look at the nose... So let's look at all the different bones here. I've got this guy, got this guy, exploded, colourful skeleton, skull. Mm, a bit too exploded. And I've got this one, which might be better. Anyway, so let's start off by looking at the bones of the skull, um, some of the features, but then the other important thing about the nose is that there's a septum dividing the left and right sides of the nasal cavity. And that's important. Uh, and let's talk about fractures, nasal fractures, which, uh, living in Wales, we get a fair few uh, nasal fractures, broken broken noses. You'll see a lot of guys walking around with broken noses, usually the big guys, because there's a huge rugby culture in Wales. Right, so the skull. On the skull, look. So this is the frontal bone. This is the maxilla. This is the mandible, right? We've got the orbit, we've got the nasal cavity. You can see in there that the bony bits that make up the dividing septum are still there, but the cartilage is gone. So there's a piece of cartilage here, and much of the much of the, the nose is made up of cartilage, which is why it's, you can move it around, right? Um, so we'll look at that in a moment. But now... There are two bones here on either side, right on the on the top of the nose there. And those are the nasal bones. And then on either side we have the lacrimal bones. And that's really hard to see on a white skull, right? So. What about this guy? Is that better? Frontal bone, maxilla. nasal bone, see the two white nasal bones there and then see the orange bit that's the lacrimal bone now if you look you see how in the lacrimal bone there's a hole, right? there's a hole in there so that's the nasal lacrimal duct your lacrimal gland is up here uh, secretes tears and you lacrimate and those tears go across the, the eye and then they drain through the nasolacrimal duct through from, which is in the lacrimal bone there which then goes and opens up in your nose well, you can kind of difficult to see grab one of these and have a look and that's why when you cry you also make a load of snot and it all dribbles out your nose and it's really attractive um, the other bone in here can you see this yellow bone right. That yellow bone there, and look. So that, the yellow bone in the roof of the nose, that's the same bone, that's the ethmoid or ethmoid bone. And that's an important bone. That, the other side of that ethmoid bone is the brain. Well, you know, the meninges in the brain. This is the zygoma. This is the sphenoid bone. This is the temporal bone. This is the parietal bone. This is the occipital bone. Down here we've got the hyoid bone. Okay, so those are the bones of the nose. Now you see this orange bone in here? That's Voma. And this orange bone is in the midline, which means that pretty much all of the other bones that we talk about are paired. There are two of them. There's a left one and a right one. Um, The Voma is an unpaired bone in the midline. Right, now let's, if we pull all that apart, that's upside down. We get that, right? So there's the nasal cavity. 
these are the the conchy, the turbulent bones and stuff, and air comes in through the nostril and goes through there, and down, these are, these are pharynx and blah, 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 all that. This then, see this? This is the ethmoid bone. So up here, well, you can see it there, look. That is the olfactory nerve, cranial nerve one. So this is your, yeah, the, the sense of smell travels through the olfactory nerve. So up here, if you look inside the skull, you've got the cribriform plate. Right, that, see where we are? That is the cribriform plate. And it's in the ethmoid bone. And the reason it's got lots of little holes in it is so the olfactory bulb sends through a bunch of little neurons which can then detect smell and then send it back to your brain. So that's the ethmoid bone there. So, yeah. So, oh, ethmoid bone. And what you can't see there is this is part of the ethmoid bone as well. This is the um, so this is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. So this is this this bit here is actually continuous with the ethmoid bone here, and it goes down. This is the maxilla here, right? The bit in the front, and this is the maxillary crest. This is vomer. There's oh, this is vomer. This is the bone in the midline, and then this is the nasal septal cartilage. And look. This is the rest of the nose. You can see this is all cartilage as well. So these three things together form the nasal septum that split your nasal cavities into left and right sides. If we're looking at it, look, this is the sphenoid bone back here. There's the sphenoid sinus. This is the frontal bone up here. Here's the frontal sinus, right, which is up here. Now, the thing is, of course, when you get an impact to your nose, if you're in a scrum, we get tackled and your face gets walloped. Or, ah. or if you're in a fight and somebody punches you to the nose, and there's, or if you're in a traffic collision and you bang your head against the steering wheel and your nose gets cracked. If it's not too bad a collision, then you're likely to break some of these cartilages. And, you know, the nose might just get flattened because you're broken the cartilages and eh, no big deal. Maybe you, want, maybe you want to straighten it back up again. But you might get it deviated. It might get pushed to one side or the other. Or some of these bones might break. Now, if some of these bones break and you get a hematoma and the hematoma gets stuck under the periosteum, that's likely to cause a problem for the septum. And if that's not fixed, i.e. you remove the hematoma, you remove the collection of blood, then um, the septum might start to necrose in future months. So sometimes a broken nose isn't as straightforward as it might seem. Also, in the walls of the nasal cavity, because of course we're breathing air in through our noses and we're warming that air up and we're humidifying it before it goes into our lungs it means there's a huge blood supply in the nasal in the, na the walls of the nasal cavity from so blow to the nose often bleeds quite a lot so you want to stop that bleeding you know pack of ice gets the inflammation down uh, closes off all the blood vessels slows the blood, all that sort of stuff you know the usual, usual first aid stuff but when the swelling's gone down you need to have a look at the nose and see if it's broken and if it's like pushed to one side or whatever so now, look, if it's an upward blow and this has pushed the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone up, you could crack the ethmoid bone up here and it's very thin. There it is there. Look, see, we're looking at the same stuff again. we just got all the soft tissue squidged in around it. Here's the is the nose, is the cartilage bit, is the nasal cavity. We've lost, you know, Voma would be here, the, the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone would be down here, we've removed those so we can see the nasal cavity. But if that perpendicular plate gets pushed up and the ethmoid bone cracks, then you may well have a patient with a drip, drip, drip of clear fluid from their nose. What's that clear fluid? Yeah. Cerebrospinal fluid. So cerebrospinal fluid that the brain is bathed in is leaking through the dura mater and through that cracked bone. Boom, 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 boom. That would be bad. Let's get that fixed. Um, so a fractured nose can be a pretty dangerous thing. Um, as I was saying before, look, here's the frontal bone. So there's the frontal sinus. This is the sphenoid bone back here. Um, 
one of the telltales of this is the, well, two telltales here. There's the pituitary gland. We know the pituitary gland is sat within this depression within the, within the sphenoid bone, don't we? That's the cella turcica. Bunk is the sphenoid bone. That's where the pituitary gland lives. Here's the maxilla here, and this is the hard palate. Here's the soft palate. The soft palate is muscular, and the soft palate lifts to, to close off the nasopharynx and the oropharynx during swallowing, but the hard palate is made of the palatine bone and the maxilla. So this palatine bone, again, we're just seeing in section. If we look on our ever cheery skull, we see that here's the palatine bone here, and there's the maxilla forming the hard palate there. This is the palatine bone. You see the shapes that makes. Unfortunately on this model, they've made the palatine bones and the sphenoid bone red, which is a bit annoying. There are lots of colours to choose from, and those two bones that sit next to each other, they've made them both red, whatever. Um, so here's the sphenoid bone back here, here's the palatine bone here on either side, and look, there, in orange there, there's Voma. So these are the turbinate bones. We have superior, middle and inferior turbinate bones, also known as the conchi, because the Greeks thought they looked like the curves of seashells, which I think is fair enough. And uh, they're covered in a, in a thin mucosa. And the, the mucosa and the blood supply and the secretion of mucus and all that sort of stuff is, is actually really carefully regulated and changes with weather and temperature and, and all sorts of things. It's actually, it's, there's actually an awful, an awful lot going on inside your nose. Um, but don't forget that I talked about the sphenoid sinus and the frontal sinus. Don't forget you've also got a maxillary sinus inside the maxilla on either side. And... Ooh, <coughs> Right. See how there is a hole through there. So in there, that's the entrance to the maxillary sinus. So, you know, the sinuses inside the face, um, they're also lined with the mucosa. It can get infected um, and you get, you know, swelling and blockage and pain with pressure changes. So you want to you wanna clear out the maxillary sinus. In there you go. I um, don't know if you saw the Blue Pool video a little while ago, but jumped um, off. There's a Blue Pool in North Gower. It's hidden away, it's a bit of a thing to find. But we found it and we jumped into it and it was very cold. Um, but later when we got home, when I, when I bent over and dropped my head, I don't know what I was doing, um, bent over to undo my shoes or something, um, all the seawater came out of my sinuses in, into my nose. So, so it jumped in while the water got pushed up, uh, probably into the maxillary sinus and I don't know, these spaces and stuff. When I bent over, it all came out again. It was uh, interesting. If you want to talk about the blood supply to the nose, that's a whole other video, to be honest. Um, the external nose, oh, you can kind of see on there, receives arteries from the facial artery, but structures inside the nasal cavity receive branches from the internal and external carotid arteries, the ophthalmic artery, we have sphenopalatine arteries and greater and lesser, but we've got, there's a huge amount of blood passing to the nasal cavity. While we're in there, we could mention nerves. What's the major sensory nerve of the face? The trigeminal nerve, that's right, cranial nerve 5. So sensory stuff in here is going through branches of the trigeminal nerve. Um, now what's the cranial nerve that innovates um, mm, dribbly, snotty, weepy structures, organs in the face, huh? Um, so in the head and neck, um, there are, so in the nasal cavity, there are uh, mucus secreting glands which make mucus, which I'm sure you've all experienced. And of course, as I said, we make tears through lacrimation and we have the salivary glands making um, saliva. So two of the salivary glands on either side and all the mucosal glands and the lacrimal glands are innervated by the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7. So that's parasympathetic innervation. You don't have any control over it. Um, and it's all motor. So cranial nerves of that region as well. That's about it, really. 
Okay, so we've talked about the bones on the front of the face, and we've talked about the bones of the nose. There aren't that many, but it's worth learning them. We've talked about the bones and the cartilage making up the nasal septum, and we briefly mentioned the cartilage forming the shape of the nose, and we've looked at those in three dimensions. Um, so consider those in, in injuries of the nose. I've managed to show you a load of stuff, but you haven't seen too much of the building work. Oh, you've seen, that's the edge of the wall building there. I've hidden most of it. I haven't got it done before the builders came in. I thought the builders were going to appear halfway through this, but... Alright, see you next time.